Okay, perfect. Okay. So uh, let us quickly summarize what we uh, discussed in our previous lecture. So in our previous lecture, uh, we uh, primarily discussed about um, the matrix for parallel computing and uh, we started with Amdahl's law. So there are many uh, other important uh, laws um, uh, and per performance uh, modeling uh, concepts which we need to understand but that we'll do gradually so because uh, now we have to learn um, several things so that we can start the uh, lab assignments on parallel programming so we'll again come back to the those theoretical concepts of uh, parallel programming modeling in parallel programming uh, later on so this summary actually this uh, slide actually summarizes the complexity of parallel programming so in in the previous lecture we have already seen that the first thing to be done is we have to identify the scope of parallelism and Amdahl's law plays a very important role we have also understood the concept of granularity we also know the concept of locality and these are the two important uh, concepts which we'll learn gradually and um, uh, these these are the concepts uh, wh which you need to uh, understand uh, more uh, in a better way when you are doing your assignments because these are very practical concepts load balance and coordination and synchronization but we are going to discuss all this i mean the important issues in load balance and coordination and synchronization so now we really know that why uh this parallel programming is significantly harder compared to sequential programming uh, and also there are many other concepts which i have not listed here for for example dependencies uh, it is uh, very important and then uh, concurrency etc we'll discuss that gradually so today uh we will be talking about shared memory parallelism so there are two important um, uh, I mean, you, you can say models actually, um, uh, uh, models of uh, par parallel platforms, or you can say communication model of parallel pl platforms. So one of the very popular model is shared memory parallelism. And this is uh, 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 quite simple as well compared to the other one, which is a distributed memory uh, communication model. Uh, so in uh, there are many uh, uh, tools uh, uh, or frameworks uh, which can be used uh, to develop and implement uh, such programs but uh, in our course we'll focus on openmp uh, so this is basically an api for writing multi threaded application this is an important point here multi threaded okay multi multi threaded because we are not talking about multiple processes we are talking about multi thread okay now, what basically uh, uh, this OpenMP, so it is basically a set of compiler directives. We'll understand what a directive is and library routines uh, for parallel application programmers. So that is what this OpenMP uh, provides us. And we'll understand uh, that it is very simple. In fact, in a couple of lectures, we'll understand and uh, in fact, we'll master the skills actually. So it greatly simplifies writing multi-threaded programs in C and C++ and also other languages such as Fortran. However, uh, the main challenges uh, are uh, uh, lies in this fact, like how we'll improve uh, the performance because uh, it, it is one thing to just introduce uh, or just uh, schedule certain number of threads, uh, you know, but how do you get the best performance out of these multi-threaded programs? And that's where the challenge lies. So uh, a major part of our um, uh, uh, time will go in understanding this part, actually. OK. Uh, it is a very brief summary of uh, OpenMP, um, ra rather very brief. And gradually, we'll go into more detail. So uh, the, this OpenMP is uh, portable. Uh, so let me first uh, write down a couple of things. I mean, what, what is portable? What is portable? OK, or you can say portability. So do you have, uh, have you heard this term earlier, portable? Anyone? OK, so let me explain. Yeah, 
you have heard this term can you explain a little bit so that i know what kind of understanding all of you have sir uh, means it is not uh, means uh, uh, kind of fixed to a machine we can use it uh, anywhere like that okay okay Trans yeah. easily transferable or something like uh, what easily transferable yeah okay easily so, so adaptable by different types of machines yes yes okay so let uh, uh, that's a good way i mean i, I will uh, exactly summarize so there are two important terms one is the scalability okay uh, and the second one is portability and many a times we confuse between these two things uh, but uh, as uh, many of you rightly said actually so portability is actually uh, so let me first write down the uh, what we exactly means by portability so by portability we means runs on different types of cores actually you can say or processors runs on different types of architectures or whatever you call it architectures so that's portability okay that's the first point second point is like a across instruction set architecture so across is so that is also uh, uh, is a part of portability so it should run across instruction set architecture and across memory models as well across memory models now what do we mean by memory models so to, uh, there are two important memory models one is shared memory and another is distributed memory so a code if it is portable it will run across memory models so either on shared or distributed so i will write it here shared versus distributed okay so th that that is what a portability is now what about scalability what do you think about scalability how is it different from portability like scale to the large application run in the large application large number of applications mm. all, all, uh, like we can extend it to the like multiple, very much low higher code. on yeah higher or, or, or more of the same process. course yes yes yeah. or on yes yeah, scalability is on more of the same core so if you have developed a code uh, which is very efficient on say four cores it should be equally efficient on eight cores 16 cores i mean so that then you can say that yes my program is scalable so i've not developed an application which is just good for say four or two cores it is it can be scalable to any number of cores i mean to a large number of cores so that that's one important aspect of scalability and also it is efficient on new generation of scores so it is scalable actually okay so that that that, that is an, uh, two important things always to be remembered in parallel programming so the whatever code you develop it is very important those codes are scalable and portable so openmp uh, is a, a framework which is very portable in fact uh, we use it for shared memory multiprocessing uh, it's a uh, that we have already discussed so this is for shared memory not for distributed uh, and this is a kind of a, it, it gives you many apis actually multi vendor support uh, uh, why i'm writing these uh, points because this is very important like when you develop a code it should uh, multiple vendors should support that so that also makes makes it quite portable and multi os support it can run on multiple ways uh, standardizes fine grained parallelism so now we know what is what is fine grained right so fine grained loop parallelism this is a very important point actually so in your code if you have loops and you know there is a possibility of fine grained parallelism then it's very very easy to i mean introduce uh, this uh, open mp i mean in one day one can learn actually it's very easy in that way it's very easy uh, simple and quick uh, scalable algorithms without message passing okay this is another important point so in message passing what happens like when when there is a communication between two cores or communication between two processors you actually pass the message here actually you are you are able to develop scalable algorithm without actually doing any communication without doing any explicit communication you do communication but that communication is via shared memory so you are actually not passing any message to someone okay this part is clear uh, this part this is a very important one all of you got this point without message passing 
so can you explain it again okay so so it, it, it is like uh, let me give you a real example so it is like suppose there are uh, something which needs to be shared uh, 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 between uh, two persons so one uh, one thing is like there is something common okay and through that uh, 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 both the persons are sharing another point is like i want to share something to uh, someone so then i have something and then i actually transfer it to the other person actually through something actually so this is like explicit uh, message passing so you are actually pa passing the message from one point to another point here is here it's like a common place some common place and then uh, that message is i mean that data is here and two persons can actually share that data now it's more e e clear yes sir Yes, uh, I mean uh, another interesting way to visualize it. Suppose there is a uh, Google Doc, and then I share it with a uh, couple of people. Uh, so I am basically uh, 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 not doing explicit uh, message passing. I am not sending an email. I can just put it there, and many people can read from there, right? So that is another way to look into it. Like, so so the point is the communication. I am still doing communication. I am giving the information, but not really through explicit uh, message passing. I'm just putting there is a shared place, shared memory through which uh, people can communicate. Okay, uh, I, it also supports coarse grained uh, algorithm. So it is not only good for fine grained, it is very good for fine grained, but it is also good for coarse grained uh, algorithms. And we have already seen what is granularity. So I'm not repeating that. The MP in OpenMP is multi processing, and it is not to be confused with OpenMPI because this MPI is message passing interface. Okay, the MP here is uh, these two are different thing. O open MP and Open MPI because we are going to do Open MPI in the next part of the course that is for distributed systems. Currently, our focus is in Open MP that is multi-processing. Okay, so this is a quick summary. Now the first uh, job is to really understand the memory types. So what we are really talking about by this distributed and shared memory. So first look into let us look into this picture that is the shared memory picture. Uh, I am also writing something called catch current single address space. Okay, we'll understand it better uh, gradually. But remember, this, the, what I am saying here is that this is catch coherent. Okay, in in the case of shared memory, which is not true for distributed system. In distributed, it is not catch coherent. It is not catch coherent. Okay, now here what is happening? There is a memory. Okay. And that memory is being shared by several uh, CPUs or cores, you can see. So the, you, you can treat them as several cores. Or uh, if, you, if, if you want to visualize it like several processors, that's fine. But the, the main concept is that there is one single memory. Okay. And then all these cores are connected to it. And that is what a typical multi-core processor is. So, and if you just compare it with another picture, uh, this schematic, which is a distributed memory picture, here you can see that each core or each CPU has its own memory. So, they, it has its own memory, it has its own memory. They can communicate, all of them communicate. This can also access this memory, no problem in that. But as such, th there is no, uh, no shared uh, memory actually. So, it is like uh, 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 each one has their own memory. You can also visualize it like that. Suppose there is a blackboard, okay? And in in the blackboard, if I am writing something, all of you are reading from there. So it is like a shared kind of space. But all of you have your notebooks where you are writing. So that is like a private kind of thing. So it is. So that's the point actually. So point here is that in this case there is a uh, shared memory space here. Uh, each one have their their own memory. This part is clear to all of you. This part is clear. Okay. Now, in in shared memory parallel computers, so the first part is single address space for all processors and cores. Changes in one catch. So that is the point. What we mean by catch coherency. Changes in one catch will be communicated to all other. So that is what is catch coherent. So shared memory uh, models are catch coherent. Distributed are not catch coherent. And the simple to program we have already discussed. Now there are two uh, variants in shared memory uh, systems. One is NUMA and another is CC NUMA. Now what is uh, 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 UMA? First, let us understand what is UMA. UMA. 
So U UMS stands for Uniform Memory Access. So all memory accessible to all cores with equal latency and bandwidth. So let's say I, I, I draw this. Let's say I draw this picture for you here. So let's say this is my uh, core one. This is my, uh, or let me write it P1, P2, P3, and P4. Let's uh, just visualize it like, like this. And then let's say there is a memory here. So you can see that this is kind of a uniform memory access. So all memory accessible to all cores, if you assume this P1, P2, P3 as four separate cores, so they, they will access this memory with equal latency and bandwidth. That is a typical uniform memory access system. Another system can be, this is one system. I have a memory here. Okay, and I have also a memory here. And uh, I, I have this P1 here, P2 here, P3 here, and P4 here. And similarly, I, I, I have uh, P1, P2, P3 here also. Okay. Now, suppose this, this P1 wants to access uh, this memory, this memory. It can do that. But it can also access this memory, which is local to it. Now, you can see the, 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 the access time for P1, this P1. Uh, to this memory, which is let's say memory one and memory two will be different. So here, uh, all memory not accessible to all cores with equal latency and bandwidth. So that that is called uh, non-uniform memory access. Both are catch coherent. This is also catch coherent. Okay. Um, um, uh, this is definitely catch coherent, and this is uh, uh, this is also catch coherent non-uniform memory access. This picture is clear to all of you. I can draw a couple of more pictures in the real context, actually, because here I have not introduced the 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 catch as such. But if I have to draw a, uh, that kind of picture, what I can do is like I can make a processor. Let's say P. I can also introduce a catch. I can do it like this. I can do a catch here, and then um, I mean I can put something here, and then I can say this is my memory. Okay. Is it a catch coherent or a, it is a uniform memory access or non-uniform memory access? If you ignore the catch now. Uniform. Uniform, exactly. So this is a uniform memory access. This is a uniform memory access with catch. OK, so why uh, why I'm giving this diagram? Because all modern um, uh, microprocessor has catch hierarchy. So it is uniform uh, memory access, even if it takes different amount of time to access uh, the catch, actually. This, this P will access its catch much faster, but otherwise will uh, uh, put it in uniform memory access category. So now if I have to draw a, a, a similar kind of thing, let's say I, I put a interconnect here. I put a, a interconnect here. And I put this. OK, and uh, so let's say this is P1, P2, P3. And I put M1, M2, M3. So these are for so P3, P3, uh, P3 and M3 belongs to one. So what is this? It's a uniform memory access or non-uniform memory access? I'm just um, writing M1, M2, M3. I'm just classifying them as M1, M2, M3. So there is the interconnect which is sitting here. And then P1, P2, P3 has to connect to either of this memory through that interconnect. So is it a uniform memory access or non-uniform? Non-uniform. Now, why it is non-uniform? Because the P1 has a memory M1, and uh, if no, the, can... I'm just classy. No, no, no. Just one minute. I'm just saying these are M1, M2, M3. I'm not saying M1 is tied with P1. Okay. Okay. So this is also uniform. Yes, because here also, I mean, P1 can P P2, M1 will uh, all has to come through this interconnect. OK, so that, that's an important point to remember, like wh wh what system exactly we are dealing with. So we are dealing with whether we are dealing with a uniform memory kind of system or it is a non-uniform memory access system. OK, so, uh, so the summary is if the time taken by a processor to access any memory in the system, global or lo local, is uniform memory access, if it is same. 
if the time taken to access certain memory is longer than others then the platform is called a non uniform memory access okay so that's the first important point now another important concept we have to understand before we go to the uh, uh, this open mp uh, details so that is uh, let, let us first call this pu as processing units okay uh, so uh, so th these are like processing units in parallel computers uh, either operate under the centralized control of a single control unit or they work independently so let me write it down so there are two choices this processing unit so either uh, operate under so either they operate under this is a very important concept in fact operate under the uh, centralized control under the centralized control of um, a single control unit i will write a single control unit or they work independently so these are the two choices here okay so let me uh, draw it a little bit for you so so this is my control unit okay and then let's say i have um, these four uh, processing unit p or pu let me call it pu so this is my pu this is my pu this is my pu okay and then um, i i can have some kind of interconnect here i mean just i can put it here okay now uh, so these are my processing elements so these are these these are my processing elements now here what is actually happening so this is like a single instruction multiple data so what is happening same instruction is synchronously executed by all processing units so i will write it down this is a very important concept same instruction same instruction so you have only single control unit so same instruction um, executed uh, i will also write synchronously executed synchronously executed by uh, all processing units concurrently okay so this is uh, a very similar to the gpus actually now we really understand this part so what is actually happening is there is only one single instruction and then you are actually working on multiple data elements so i can always use parallel data structures like array okay i can use parallel data structures like arrays okay on the other hand i can have uh, this kind of design where i have say i i have this processing element this these are my processing elements processing units or uh, plus control unit and i have another processing element plus another control unit another processing element plus control unit okay and then they are connected through an interconnect now here what is going to happen is like this is not SIMD, this is SPMD, or it can be MIMD. But but the, I'm now highlighting SPMD actually. What is he, here actually what, he, what is happening? Multiple instances of the same program executing on different data. So it is multiple instances of the same program, not the instruction of the same program. Um, uh, and that is being executed on different data okay this part is clear to all of you these two concepts all of you understood this part yes sir yeah so very very important what is the difference between simd and what is spmd not to be confused here it is single control unit you have the single instruction and that is being concurrently executed on different processing units here you have a single program same program but they are actually they 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 have different control units actually 
so e each processing unit is capable of executing a different program independent of other that is also possible so that is like mimd they can also have different programs okay so so these are two important concepts uh, before we go ahead now let's uh, uh, sir i have a doubt uh, yes. sir in the uh, sir why are we not referring to the uh, like the second example of uh, independently working as spsd because uh, ultimately like in that one unit there would be uh, just one data no 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 they can uh, they can still work on the uh, i mean multiple data so uh, let, let's say let me give you an example ai is equal to bi plus ci okay so what is the operation here what is the instruction here what is the instruction um uh, like to add exactly to add that is the instruction okay now what i am saying that this is good very good this design is very good single instruction i only have single instruction okay and then ju just i am going to operate on different data elements and that that's why i called the parallel data structure like array is very useful you have a so you can just manage with a single control unit and gpus actually are very powerful because they they use this philosophy so they, they don't use lot of silicons in uh, c control units so they just make lot of processing elements alus see you, you give me single instruction and then i can work on big data actually same 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 instruction on multiple uh, on multiple data here what is happening is that i have the i don't i am not talking about same instruction i can have the same program but inside i can operate on multiple data also you got it right yes sir got it yes because multiple data is all, all, always a, important but but here what is happening is like here uh, some other instruction can go some other instruction so so it is like different parts of the pool so if the program is same but the instruction is not same in this case okay and in fact uh, uh, what can happen is like different uh, programs can also independently run on different uh, processing units so that, that is also possible that different programs can run uh, uh, on the uh, different i mean all, all these uh, different processing units this part is clear right to all of you yes sir okay now so uh, uh, if we have to summarize uh, 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 between the shared and distributed memory system so in shared memory system all processors share a global memory so that that is this global memory is there this global memory so that's why it's so simple to program uh, however distributed memories uh, uh, the distributed memory each processor physically has its own uh, private memory associated with it a uh, bus contention leads to poor scalability so sometimes what happens the scalability is not very good in this kind of framework but here the scalability is very good but memory management is more difficult because each has their own different memory okay now uh, before we go ahead it's very important to understand uh, uh, because we are very often uh, using this uh, term called concurrency okay now what is concurrency that uh, and how does it differ from parallelism that is very important to understand so let me write concurrency versus parallelism okay now a system is said to be concurrent if it can support two or more actions in progress this is a very very important point at the same time in progress at the same time a system is said to be parallel if it can support two or more actions executing simultaneously so here we are not talking about a simultaneous execution concurrency does not mean simultaneous execution however parallelism actually means simultaneous execution so uh, let me give you an example so it is like suppose uh, uh, you have two three drinks let's say you have water okay you have coffee and you have coke okay I, I, and i tell you that uh, uh, finish all these three drinks within a given amount of time so what you can do, do there are many ways to do is one way is like first you finish your water then you finish your coffee and then you drink your coke 
other way is like you do a little bit of water then a little bit of coffee then a little bit of coke again a little bit of uh, maybe coffee then again little bit of coke and then again water something like this so here what you are doing is like all the three processes are in progress you are also drinking water you are also drinking coffee you are also drinking coke but you are not doing it simultaneous and what is this called this process concurrency yeah concurrency but i i i hope you have done a operating system course so you must tell context switching right yes yeah so what exactly you are doing is like you are switching the context you are going from water to coffee coffee to coke but it is looking i mean that's the illusion or, or i can give you another example it is like you are looking into a movie you are watching a movie and then you are also doing sms so you have a feeling that i am doing two things together but actually you are not doing uh, two things together it is actually a kind of illusion illusion like you are doing two things simultaneously but you are not actually you are just switching the context so fast that it looks like you are working on multiple things together but you are not really doing that but now uh, let's say uh, uh, the same scenario water plus coffee plus coke and now i say, uh, say you that do it uh, the finish these three things as fast as possible now you say that i will divide it among friends so you are drinking this so this is person one this is person two person three so actually th all the three things are uh, uh, doing uh, 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 being done concurrently uh, i mean uh, either you say simultaneously so so uh, person one is drinking water at the same time person two is drinking uh, coffee at the same time person three is drinking coke so here uh, you, you can finish the whole thing in a very small amount of time here you cannot uh, finish the whole thing because there is only one person who is just doing the uh, three things together so that's why in progress two or more actions in progress at the same time at the same time you are just switching the context but here you are actually executing things simultaneously this part is very clear to all of you what is the difference between concurrency and parallelism this part is clear yes sir. yes sir. yeah so what is the requirement here now can you tell us what is the requirement the the must requirement in this case in case of parallelism more people matlab exactly exactly so concurrency you can do it on single code See, and that's what actually operating system does actually so single processor because single processor can run only one process runs at a time so single code means only one process okay only one process at any instant of time at any instance of time but you can do context switching so you can switch from one process to the next and back very quickly via context switches so it is like a illusion of multiple process so let me write it very clearly that it is an illusion of multiple process but it is not actually multiple process multiple process so it is a it is not really multi processing here but this is an ex so context switching is an example of concurrency now when you are talking about multiple processor so you really have multiple processors now multiple processors okay so here actually multiple processors are uh, i mean uh, being worked on different amount of uh, 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 cores actually so which can give you performance parallelism exactly so this can never give you performance this can never give you performance this the, the goal here is performance actually this actually just helps you in uh, doing things in a proper way i mean uh, that, that's the only goal here actually that is something does not just get uh, hang or something so there, there you are switching the context and you're doing it a very good way so there is a scheduler uh, uh, which is doing this for you this uh, context switching but here you are actually uh, getting performance because you have multiple cores so concurrency is about dealing with lot of things at once parallelism is about doing lots of things at once it is just dealing it is actually doing that's the important point so parallelism needs hardware with multiple processing units in single core cpu we can get concurrency 
but not not parallelism parallelism is a specific kind of concurrency tasks are really executed sim simultaneously and that's why you get performance so this is the takeaway from this discussion a everybody clear with this concept uh sir so like how is then concurrency uh better than like serial programming or why do we like do concurrency like if if we have serial programming that delivers similar results okay okay that's a good question may uh, I, I i i will actually like to discuss that maybe at certain point of time because we have discussed about pipeline right if you remember yes sir yeah so there is a concept called pipeline bubble we'll come there later because that's the architecture concept actually so what happens like uh, generally what happens you, you you have already created a very sophisticated hardware now it is always better to use that properly and for that actually this concurrency helps a lot actually you have a single uh, uh, core actually single processor but with concurrency you can do uh, better actually okay so but it will not give you i mean it's not always going to give you performance actually. You got this point right yes sir. okay yeah so by, by switching actually uh, we we can take uh, most out of the re resources but not performance I will, I will i will one day i will discuss that actually that's a very different story i will come there later on okay but otherwise you have broadly understood that this concept right concurrency versus parallelism yes sir okay now now let us go here okay now uh, okay now we, before we go there i think it's very important to understand a little bit about uh, uh, the threads and um, the process actually so uh, all of you have some understanding of process and threads or i need to discuss it from the beginning should i start from the basics okay so uh, okay so let, let, let me just uh, do a very brief summary uh, of this uh, process versus threads okay okay now uh, uh, what is a process let me let us first because uh, i i hope all of you can answer that what is a process a running instance of program is called process exactly process is an good process is an instance of a program in execution so process is an instance instance of a program in execution okay now the now the first thing which i would like to discuss um, uh, i mean when i'm uh, talking about process is the the uh, the uh, the address space actually so let let me just look into the uh, process and what are the associated address space because that's the most important concept we need for opinion okay so uh, i'll just draw it for you quickly okay so first i will draw a, draw, draw a stack okay you know what is a stack right what is stack why why we have a st stack for function calls no, but what what, it, what does it store? Because this is the address space actually. So what does it store? The stack. Uh, I mean, if I have to generalize, it basically stores the temporary data, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So for function parameters, that's fine. I mean, what do you store? So let me also write that function parameters. Okay, and uh, and the local variables basically local. Variable. Okay. Uh, uh, now let me also draw a heap. Uh, wh what else we have in in addition to stack and heap in a process? Global memory. Huh? Yeah, global memory. So that we call data. Okay, data space and 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 what else? So global memory is global variables. So global variables are in this data variables okay and what else and the text of code very good text okay so that is the program code 
okay now comes uh, what is this heap actually how is it different from the stack anyone how is the heap different from a stack it stores the dynamically uh, allotted memory heap very good very good dynamically dynamically allotted memory okay so let me so let me summarize so you have stack and heap so the heap is dynamically allotted memory the stack is basically for temporary data now you have to compare about the size i mean uh, 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 i mean uh, what about stack yeah, and what about heap uh, both are fixed in size no sir uh, which is fixed in size stack yes we can change yeah yeah stack size is generally fixed but uh, the heap is actually you can see it's dynamically allocated so heap is actually operated by the os so i will write it heap is operated by os and it's dynamically we have already written that and and which is faster between stack and uh, heap 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 no no Heap is not faster. Stack is faster. Okay, stack is faster than heap. And where where are they get actually stored? They both are get stored in RAM. Okay, both are stored in ram so these these are another couple of important points which you need, need to remember but this is very important diagram which you have to remember because in open mp this is very very important to understand because now we are talking about a process associated address space and then gradually are going to get into the threads so this is a typical process associated address space so i have a space uh, i mean i have a stack i have heap i have data i have uh, text and most important is stack and heap uh, and uh, as we can see the heap is actually dynamically allocated and stack is fixed and stack is faster than the heap so that's the first point about the process the second point about the process is like what is the status of the process what is the status of a process so this is the first point the associated so whenever you are discussing about a process the first is the definition then what are the important things first is associated address space the second is the status of a process so what are the possible status of a process typical status running or killed or a zombie or something like that. exactly exactly yes exactly so it can be new it can be ready it can be uh, um, the running it can be waiting it can be waiting it can be terminated so these are the important uh, status so running means the process is just being created waiting means it is waiting to be assigned to a processor so it is waiting okay um, uh, 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 waiting is basically waiting for for some event to occur uh, uh, ready is actually something like uh, it is almost ready to be assigned to a processor running means instructions are being executed so that is clear and terminated means uh, uh, this process has finished execution so th that's the st typical state of a process now another important thing is the process control block process control block now why do we need process control block that's the first question why we need process control block to store the information about the process yeah wh why we want to in uh, store the information about the process sir uh, if uh, in case of preemption if uh, the process comes back we we, we need to know exactly. that the process left and all that exactly so now if you are talking about say the, the if i draw this diagram so that the diagram we just talked about the context switching actually so let's say this was my process 1 and then you went to process 2 in time and then you have process 3 this is my time axis Okay, now so suppose I again want to come back to P1. Okay, or uh, again I go want to go to P3. Because here you are doing switching actually. So here you are actually doing switching. 
So if you want to do switching, you want to come back, then you need some information. So that that's typically a process control block. So what is there in process control block? What are the important uh, things which are there? The most important one? PID. Yes, the process ID. Process ID. That each process has an ID. Very, very important point. Because now we are gradually going to get into the uh, thread IDs also. So you remember that each process has an ID, unique ID. Then there is a process status, which is here. So this is my process status. Okay. And then there are other things. I mean, the register, CPU registers, open files, memory, all, all those things. Okay. So th this overall picture is clear to all of you uh, about a process. Yes, sir. Uh, one question. Uh, if stack and heap are both present in RAM, so why is stack faster than heap? So that's because of the the way uh, the, the, the the bookkeeping mechanism and all those things. I mean, how this is actually managed. So that comes from the management actually, because uh, how yes. how they, their access there there is a different uh, uh, mechanism that you know uh, about that because I don't want to go into those details now. Okay, uh, okay, have you done a course on uh, operating system? You have done a course. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So these are the important points I just want to give because otherwise uh, our goal is actually to get into the uh, open MP and uh, to understand threads actually because that is what we are going to do multiple threads. So now I want to give you uh, uh, further details about the thread. Now let's understand thread because that is what is our interest. Okay. Now. Uh, uh, what is a good definition of thread? What can be a good definition of thread? So uh, it's a some kind of a basic unit of CPU utilization. You can write basic unit of CPU utilization. Okay. So 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 this is a part of a process. Actually. So this is a part of a process that's very important. So flow of control within a process that I'll, I will write actually. Flow of control within a process. Okay. Now uh, uh, the point here is that uh, 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 I mean, how should I visualize this? So let, let, let me first write what, what a thread is. What a thread includes. Yeah, what a thread includes. So ideally, what uh, what a thread should include? Ideally, just from your understanding of process, can you list me down what should it include? A thread ID. Parent process. Yes, that's exactly thread ID. That's very important. Parent process ID. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a part of the process. So uh, uh, that's the process ID. So I'm not writing it under thread, but thread itself has its own ID, thread ID. It has its program counter. Okay, it has its registers and stack. This this has its own register set. Okay, and it has its own stack. That that's the most important point. But it shares some resources. It shares some resources with the process. What are the things it shares? So it shares the text section. Okay. It shares the data section. And it shares the other operating OS resources. Other OS resources. Okay. So, so, so uh, uh, it will look something like this. I, if I have to visualize it, I will visualize it is like something like this. So suppose I have three threads, let's say T1, T2, and T3. So each one of them has its own stack. Okay. And, and this is actually being seared. So the heap is seared. And uh, the data is seared. And the text is shared, and this each uh, one of them has its own stack. Okay, this picture is clear to all of you. Yes, sir. This picture is yeah. Okay, so so the point is that each thread has has its own thread ID, but it shares it it has its own stack. That that's the most important point, and. It shares uh, some resources which are like heap, uh, text, data, and other waste resources. Okay. Now, 
uh, uh, now, now, now the another important point which I should write because several threads share a common address space. So now you can see that this is a common address space. Several threads share a common address space. So therefore, uh, they are lightweight actually. So they, therefore, it's actually a very lightweight process. You can also visualize it as a lightweight process. Okay, so today we'll restrict our discussion up to this. I mean, for three and as far as three and process is concerned, and we'll move move ahead, and then again we'll come back to uh, this discussion of three and process in, in little details later on. Okay, now let's go ahead uh, and uh, talk about the uh, the programming part actually. So uh, the the fundamental concept which you are going to use for this open MP based uh, multi threaded programming is called fork join. Uh, concept so which is actually a way of expressing concurrency within a computation so so fork is called by a thread so this is called a master thread or a parent thread to create a new thread or several new threads which are called child of concurrency so parent thread continues after the fork operation child begins operation separate from the parent so the, these are separate this child is a separate thread and we can say that fork basically creates concurrency so it, it really creates multiple tasks actually now now those can be operated on different threads on the other hand join is called by the again by the parent and child both here it is just called by the thread the parent here it is called by both the parent and child so child calls join after it finishes once the thread is done the child threads are done uh, so they calls uh, 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 the join. So basically, there is a synchronization. So there is a there is a um, um, expl implicit synchronization. So implicitly on exit, parent waits until child joins. So until all the child joins, parent will wait. And once this is done, then it will continue afterwards. So basically, if you have to summarize what is join, so join removes concurrency and parent creates concurrency will visualize this in a better way through this diagram so what is happening uh, this is the program so th this is my program okay this is my code or program whatever you call it so this is the first the serial part so that is the process actually the process starts or a single thread starts so that you call a master thread that is being denoted in red color so that in the beginning always there is only one thread always so there is one master thread now at this point uh, you have the fork so the moment you call fork what happens it introduces concurrency so that means multiple multiple uh, uh, tasks are created you can see the the three whites and one red which is the master itself and then they are executed in parallel so this part is done in parallel so you can see this is parallel now again uh, uh, the moment all the childs are done they will call join so once they call join all of them will there is a implicit synchronization so all of will come together and once the master thread makes use that all the threads have finished their work and then the master thread will only continue again this is a sequential part again uh, another uh, uh, such uh, region can be called that is a parallel region and interestingly you can have different number of threads for different regions so here you can have four threads here you can have let's say one two three four five six threads and also you can have nested uh, parallel region also see here you can see a nested parallel region so th th that depends on how we code actually and depending on the algorithm you can code accordingly okay so so the summary is master thread spawns a team of threads as needed parallelism added incrementally until performance goals are made that is the sequential program evolves into a parallel program and um, uh, uh, but uh, the challenging part is how do you coordinate among these threads how do they do the data access and all those without making any a uh, big error so th this overall concept is clear this fork join parallelism any question on this slide this part is clear to all of you Sir, if we have yeah. variable outside the four thread, then it could be accessed by like I don't understand that uh, how it could be accessed. 
like first child program program will use and change it then the master program will like use the change variable or the the old one which one which one you are referring to like uh, suppose that we have the some some variable in the main main program mm -hmm. and we forked then we have created the new child right so the and the we we are changing the variable in the child process like uh, we have and the new value yes the, yes yes yeah, we'll we'll come there gradually. We'll come there. We'll okay. come. We are going to the data scope. We are coming. So uh, till now, I have not got into the data scope. So now we'll go to the scope of the data. Okay. So, now overall concept is clear. So the overall concept here is that there are multiple threads. There is one thread which is called master thread, which actually spawns a team of threads, which are called child threads, and then they join and again uh, it can be done, and we can have several parallel regions in a single code. That part is clear, right? Okay. Now. Uh, uh, so, uh, if you have to summarize whatever we have discussed, so fork join is a concurrency control mechanism. Fork increases concurrency, join decreases concurrency. Fork join dependency rules. A parent must join with its forked children, and forked children within the same parent can join with the uh, parent in any order. So, this is another important point. So, it, it is not so th this part, if you can look into the join part. So anyone can join at any order actually so for first judge thread one can come and then thread four can come then thread three can come but finally they have to join and once they join then the master thread can go ahead so uh, everyone has to wait there so there is a kind of a um, implicit synchronization at this point the join point okay now uh, uh, so uh, let me uh, look into this so what we have already discussed we have discussed uh, uniform memory access non-uniform memory access and now we are going to discuss this which is directives and pragmas we have understood what is process and what is thread in a very broad sense uh, and uh, now we are also going to come into shared and private memory uh, okay so now there is this concept which is I have like yes. little doubt that the process yes. and threads are creates concurrency or parallelism which one process and threads are creates concurrency or the parallelism yes actually if you look into this slide very carefully so then i have written a very important statement that parallelism is a specific kind of concurrency uh, that, all right but i was asking that we are creating the process by using forks so it will create the concurrency no no no, no. We, we are we are not creating process there is only single process here in this yes, diagram there is only single process and multiple threads yes yes okay then it's okay. a concurrency right in the single yes process. so he yes 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 so here you you, you so, so, so concurrency is what is concurrency concurrency is like creating several tasks yes yes now the point is like whether you are going to uh, uh, i mean execute those tasks simultaneously or we are going to do it in parts mm -hmm. if, if, if you are really doing all those uh, sub tasks simultaneously then it is parallelism yes, okay sir. so here you are actually introducing multiple threads but not to be confused with multiple processes this is a single process okay. in this diagram there is only one process but you have multiple threads at different parallel regions okay yes, sir okay now uh, let me introduce this uh, uh, this concept which is called structured block so uh, you know what is a structured block in a code okay so structured block in a code is typically one uh, one point of entry and one point of exit to be uh, uh, understand in a very simple way so there is one point of entry and one point of exit. Okay, so so that that th that is typically a structured block. So can you give me an example of a structured block in a code? Let me give you an example for i is equal to one to n. Do do something uh, operations, and this is end. So what is happening here? one point of entry and one point of exit okay now suppose 
I I introduce something here that leads to branching. Then it is not a structured block. So branching is not allowed. This is very important. Okay. This part is clear to all of you. Sir, can a function call be called a structured block? Any, anything can be called uh, 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 is allowed. Function, uh, I mean, call to function exit is allowed. That is fine. But branching is not allowed. Okay, so let me write that. Uh, so, so the call to function exit is allowed. Okay. But as such, uh, branching is not allowed. That is a structured block. But typically, we'll be dealing with situations which are very simple, like the simple for loops. OK, so I am talking about that kind of structured blocks. And OpenMP is very, very powerful in um, handling those kind of structured blocks. So this part is clear, right, all of you? OK. Sir. Yes. Sir, any anything without branching statement would be considered structured block, right? Yeah, you can view it like that. Yes, without uh, branching, it's a, it's a kind of a structured block. Okay. Yes. OK. Now, what we need to understand as far as OpenMP is concerned. So there are four important things we need to understand. One is the programming model. Second is the execution model. Third is the communication model. So here, communication is uh, via shared memory. There is no explicit communication. And then there is a memory model. Okay, so we'll do it one by one. So first, uh, uh, mm, uh, we, we, we have already discussed that uh, we are talking about shared memory with thread-based parallelism, so not process, thread-based parallelism. It's not a language, okay? We simply are going to use some compiler directories, library calls, and environment variables. Uh, I, I will explain what is environmental variables later on. No automatic parallelism. So the programmer has to explicitly specify the parallel execution parts in the code. OK, so no automatic uh, parallelism. And compiler does not ignore user directives even if wrong. So if, if so, the what kind of mistakes we can make, that we'll uh, discuss later on. So the point, point is, if you make some mistakes, compiler will simply ignore it. OK, um, uh, uh, this is an important point. OK, now. Uh, let us look into this a, in a more broad sense. So if I have to really look into the OpenMP architecture, so there are uh, uh, three uh, uh, views actually which are important. So one is the, the, the programmer's view. Uh, you can call it the application developer view. Then there is a user view, the so user who is uh, using that application. And then there is operating system view, which is here, right? OSP. Now, user is going to use only some environment variables. So what is those environment variables? So user will decide, uh, I want to run it on how many threads. I want to uh, uh, use what kind of scheduling strategy. By scheduling strategy, I mean uh, wh wh how much amount of work to be uh, given to which thread, in what way the, the work will be divided. So that the user can decide. So that, that can be decided using the environment variables. As far as application developer, the programmer is concerned. So programmer, what uh, he or she is going to do, uh, they are going to use some uh, directives, which you call compiler directives or pragmas. And then uh, they will identify the parallel regions and uh, put the uh, directives accordingly. And they are going to use the runtime library for that. And threads are actually uh, the ways actually uh, uh, it looks into the functionality in, in terms of threads and, and then it can map to the uh, cores which are actually present in the hard okay so so from the operating system point of view open mp functionality is based on the use of threads so you have multiple threads and which can be mapped to multiple cores programmers job simply consists in inserting suitable parallels and directives into code so this is where the programmer comes we have to know about the available directives and where to put what these directives should not influence the sequential functionality of the code okay now as we have already discussed that there are in a given code there can be a serial part there i mean the sequential part and then there is a parallel part 
so generally uh, always i mean not generally this directive does not influence the sequential part so this will only work where those uh, the parallel regions are concerned openmp aware compiler is capable of transforming the code blocks marked by openmp directives so typically what happens let's say this is my code okay and then i i mark that this is where i want to introduce parallelism okay and you are going to use some directive here you are going to use some open mp directive so operating system will automatically understand this okay and that runtime the user the user can decide uh, by setting environmental variables which are like number of threads typically what resources should be made available to the parallel parts of his executable and how they are organized or cd so this part is clear more or less so that is the overall overview of open mp architecture if you have any questions you can ask and then we'll go into the details this part is clear to all of you okay okay now let me quickly run through and then um, uh, we'll uh, gradually again um, revisit all the concepts using different examples okay so this i think already i have discussed um, once again i will just quickly summarize so a thread is an independent instruction stream thus allowing concurrent operation threads tend to share state and memory information and may have some private data this is important threads are usually lighter weight allowing faster context switching and in open mp usually wants no more than one thread per code so if you want to get a linear performance then you have to just use one thread per code because the point is uh, if you look here uh, the user user can uh, specify any number of threads so suppose the user does not know that uh, that computer has four cores so suppose I, I have given you a computer which is four cores c1 c2 c3 c4 but as an user you can uh, write i want 16 threads so that does not mean that you are going to get a, a, a some kind of a 16 times performance because finally in the hardware you have only four cores so you, you can give 16 threads but finally uh, uh, the hardware is uh, only will support four threads at a time okay so that's the important point so in open mp usually wants no more than one thread per core so ideally you should look into your hardware how many cores are there and give the required number of threads if you do not mention how many threads by default also the compiler will assign uh, some threads based on the hardware information okay now uh, as far as execution model is concerned so open mp program starts single threaded so as we discussed there is a master thread which is the first thread to create additional threads user starts a parallel region okay so so as we already seen the uh, overall schematic now we'll discuss how to create those uh, multiple threads so ad additional threads are launched to create a team so there's a team of threads original thread is always a part of the team threads go away at the end of the parallel region so the so what we want to uh, parallelize typically the structured blocks actually okay now uh, and then you can repeat parallel regions as necessary so let's say i i have this uh, loop for i is equal to 1 to n and something here i mean a structured block and then end so what i, I can ideally do is like i can give uh, uh, i can create a parallel region here uh, here some parallel region and then some part of these uh, iterations will be done by one thread some part will be done by some second thread some part will be done by the third thread and some part will be done by the fourth thread if i have four threads so now the, our goal is to understand how do we introduce this uh, this uh, uh, directive or pragmas here on the top of your for loop okay this part is clear to all of you up to this part okay so if i have no questions i will go ahead now now uh, uh, we are coming to the data model actually the scope of data that is the the storage model so shared memory programming model has two variables actually so so one is the shared by default so if you do not mention if you do not mention anything explicitly then the 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 variables are treated as shared by default so global variables are shared among threads so all the threads can access those global variables and they are shared and that there is a shared memory that's why and they all uh, uh, anyone can access because this is stored in the shared memory now here is the important point that there are private variables exist only within the new scope that is they are unutilized and undefined outside the data scope 
so uh, only when uh, you you create private variables inside uh, i mean so you are uh, you have identified a parallel region so inside there actually you can create a private variable which will be used there loop index variables are automatically private variables so typically or sometimes it is also a good idea to explicitly mention them as private variables so like in this case you can see for i is equal to 1 to n i gave you an example so this will be treated as a private variable so for each thread it will be a private and and stack variables in in sub programs are called from parallel regions so uh, as we have already discussed that each thread has its own stack actually okay now uh, uh, we can just focus on this part yeah, we are not doing using fortran so if you are using c so typically this is how actually you introduce uh, threads actually pragma omp parallel so th this this particular statement this particular statement this parallel okay this so paragma omp parallel so that actually executes create threads so this is what is written only one way to create threads in open MP. so just put it on the top of a for loop and that will create a parallel region and it will spawn threads for you this part is clear to all of you so like we need uh, we need to install any libraries in the pc Yes, yes, yes. So that that is already installed in the pieces which have been given to you. Okay, so okay. those open API libraries are installed. If you want, you can also download it and install it in your laptop. So you will get it from openmp.org. Okay. okay. And you can use the JNU compiler. I mean, the, that C compiler, GCC, that also supports openMP. Okay. Now, now the here the point is like how you introduce. Uh, open a parallel region so you have to just put this statement on top of your uh, uh, code which you want to execute uh, by each thread yeah. so typically a for loop uh, to start with we'll just use for loops and we can just put it there Hello, okay sir. now yes sir we can create also thread using for call also so what is the use of uh, this open mp parallel no, no, no. Fork, fork and join is, is is a concept actually. That that's a that's like a concept. So that you can do either using OpenMP or some other library because there is not a single uh, way to do shared memory parallel programming. There are other models also. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, okay. So it it is like a concept. Like what is the concept? The concept is fork join. Okay. Now, uh, in in OpenMP, how do you do that? This is the syntax actually. This is exactly what you have to do if you are using OpenMP. Okay. 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 Sir, what does pragma mean here? Yes, yes. I, I'm coming there actually. Okay. What is pragma? Means what? Okay. And then what is this parallel? We'll go, go there gradually. Okay. Now. So uh, generally you do ICC. ICC program name. I mean, uh, but here what you have to do, you have to use this flag minus o, o open MP, but uh, minus O or uh, Q open MP that you can check actually. Uh, but in case of JNU uh, uh, compiler GCC, you have to use minus F. So this you remember because in our systems, JNU compiler is installed. So you have to compile your program using GCC minus F open MP, then the name of the program. Okay. Now, what are pragmas? So C pragmas, so, so first is that C pragmas are case sensitive. So pragmas are basically, uh, uh, you can say that that the, is, uh, let me write it down otherwise. Okay, pragmas. okay. So, so these are likes to start some threads. Okay, so, 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 so these are used to start some threads. So this is basically the fork join concept. So forked threads. okay and and each thread execute the functions and then get terminated so this this will uh, uh, this will uh, i mean each thread you you have uh, already started several threads so each thread will execute the whatever function is given to it execute the function you can also call a function um, uh, or job whatever and uh, then it gets terminated okay 
uh, 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 you, uh, okay, it depends on which language actually you are using. So typically curly processes, if you're using a C and to enclose parallel regions. Okay, this part is clear now. Okay, so 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 you can say that the, these are like the, 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 these are like uh, special uh, pre-processors instruction. You can if you have to really visualize it is I mean this pragmas. I mean if you have to uh, uh, understand, you can also look at like this that these are some special these are some special pre-processors uh, instruction. okay so so interestingly the the same code which you have uh, we, suppose you have uh, because what you are doing is like you are taking a code and you are simply inserting this pragmas okay or directives whatever you call it pragmas or directives in c we call it pragmas uh, so what happens is like the same code can be executed serially also if you are doing it serially, then simply these 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 will be ignored. So because you have you have this 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 uh, this particular symbol here, so the, uh, by the compiler understands that which is the open MP. I mean the region, the pa parallel region. So you can execute the same code, same open MP code serially as well. So simply these these uh, instructions will be ignored and the code will be executed sequentially. So that that's why this is uh, this is so simple as well as so powerful. Okay, now the next point is how do we specify threads? So the simplest way to specify the number of threads used on a parallel region is to set the environment variable. By environment variable, I, I mean uh, in the bash. So suppose you are using a Linux environment, in the bash you can simply write this export OMP num threads equal to four. So that means uh, uh, after you have given this statement, whatever you execute, they will use four threads. Okay, or you can also, uh, uh, I mean, a uh, state environment that is also, but this is uh, what uh, you should do actually. This is a good way to do. There are other ways to specify. You can also specify the number of threads inside the code also. But typically, to start with, we'll actually uh, uh, use this. This part is clear to all of you. All of you, this part is clear before we go ahead. hello yes sir yes sir yes 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 okay so so uh, uh, to summarize we have understood how to compile we have understood um, uh, how, how to uh, i mean how to uh, uh, tell how many threads to be used so that is to be done using this command okay and then uh, there are uh, three important things uh, one is uh, the compiler directives now the, those pragmas actually what we are talking about so, so the compiler directives or pragmas whatever you call it uh, so there are three important categories and each of them has a certain specific role and that we'll understand gradually so one is uh, called control constructs so that is like it sim simply creates parallel regions and distribute work so that that is like construct contracts directive the second is the data scoping. So it actually controls the shared and private attributes. So which are shared variables, which are private variables. And third directives are basically synchronization. So that is typically used for coordinations, like barriers, atomic, and then there are many synchronization variables. We'll learn the important ones. So that's the first point. So that's the compiler directives. The second uh, point is the runtime control. So using this, actually, you first create a uh, number of threads this is the environment variable like how many threads to be used and then there are other things like you want to know which thread that also you can do okay so uh, we have to use this header file always uh, remember to include the header files because most of the functions uh, are in this file okay okay so here you can see uh, you can also uh, 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 so there are two ways actually either you directly do it from the bash you can directly tell export OMP num threads equal to four. So four threads will be set or you can also do it from the program uh, here. For example, here you are saying num threads equal to four. So whatever comes below here in the program, so that that will be executed using four threads. Okay. 
now let us look into a very simple uh, the first example we'll look today so suppose i i have a this simple program and i want to convert it into a multi threaded program okay so how, how what should what changes i should do here can you just summarize that then i will understand how much we have understood including library and then writing the pragma good so, first you have to include the header file okay and then what pragmas you will write here where i will introduce that pragma for like uh, converting it to the parallel like now, the... where will introduce where will introduce here here where no 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 in the print like which block we want to run in the parallel so suppose i want to run this in parallel this this block uh, the... print save hello yes like uh, before like id we want to use in the parallel then before the id okay okay so suppose we have introduced these pragmas after that what we will do how we will compile it like usually we compile like c program and you know, writing the flag f open mp ah huh. gcc minus f open mp so the so two steps so very simple so first you have to write, introduce the pragma and then uh, the second step is like how many threads you want so that you can do through export omp num threads and give the name number of threads and then you run it so simple uh, things to be done so first is like include omp.h header file now uh, uh, here you can see that the moment you will do this pragma omp parallel here so this is the pragma or directory pragma omp parallel so the moment you write this parallel and then you put this curly braces and this curly braces here so this region will be done in parallel now suppose you have set omp num threads equal to 4 so suppose you have threads four threads so how many values of id i will get in this particular program what will be the output of this program can someone tell me what will be the output of this program hello zero world zero how many times maybe four i think so five yes. times why five, five times so because uh, there is one parent thread also so in that also so, so parent thread is no parent thread is always included in total number yes, okay. okay so if i have written export oh, yes. yeah okay so one second let me sum, uh, summarize quickly so step one step one is the, on the bas you just write export omp number of threads so here you set the thread export omp num threads let's say four step 2 include the header file omp.h step 3 identify the structured block or wherever you want to the parallel region whatever you want to do parallel and then put the first uh, directive you can see there is no other things here i mean there are many things which can be included here but i am simply creating a parallel region that's all in this simple program and then you compile it with minus f of omp and this will generate Uh, I mean, if you have four threads, it will generate "Hello World" four times. Okay. Now, let me uh, make it a little bit complicated. Now, again, the same program. So first, you have uh, included the OpenMP directory, OpenMP dot h. Again, the same thing. Pragma OMP parallel. So this has created the parallel region. So that is between these curly braces. So this is the end of the parallel region. This is the start of the parallel. now what you have done is like you have introduced id and now you are using this which is a function actually omp get thread now okay now what it does actually it will give you the 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 run time library this is a function actually this is a run time library function to return a thread id so if you have four threads so it will each thread has its own id and then you will uh, so if you have four threads you will get hello 1 0 1 2 3 so it starts from 0 actually and interesting thing to note here is that they are not in order so you are get, first getting hello 1 then hello 0 then world 1 world 0 hello 3 hello 2 world 3 world 2 you are not getting in order so it can so any thread can uh, 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 finish in any order so 
all of you can understood this simple program yes, yes sir yeah so if you simply write this program then it will so it will uh, the, the 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 job of this first program is to make sure that your uh, to verify that your open mp environment is working properly because if if you are getting this output so that means you are able to compile it properly you are able to generate the thread numbers properly and also you are able to convince yourself that yes exactly four number of threads are actually running parallel but here as such they are not doing anything parallelly because it is just a hello world printing but just to verify the environment very okay sir like one doubt yes yes open mp introduce the Uh, like a concurrency or parallel parallelism i didn't still get the open mp introduced uh, i mean uh, uh, it's a very difficult statement you are making actually so in one way you can say what is concurrency that's first you have to understand like dividing open the to small parts exactly 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 so now now the point is like Uh, uh open mp what it does is like it enables you in running those parts in, in multiple threads yes sir so when you when you do those threads simultaneously when, when you are those small tasks which you have uh, when you we have divided those big task into small tasks and then you when you actually do it on several uh, threads simultaneously then it is parallelism Yes. Sir. Okay. So the, do not look into done. this. Example. Yeah, I think this is a not good uh, example to ask this question. This the example particularly because you yes. don't see a parallel work here. But yes. your question is very relevant. We'll one second we'll understand your question with a better example. Like okay. every thread runs in the different core or the same core, like same processor. Every thread runs on different cores. Okay, sir. Every thread runs on different cores. Yes. Hello, sir. Yes. Yeah, sir. Here, ID sir zero to three are compulsory, or it can be any number. No, it is compulsory. Okay. Okay. It is automatic generated. You don't generate it. You just tell number of threads. Okay. Thread ID is generated automatically. Okay. Yeah. It always starts with zero. So it is like if you have n threads, so ID will be n minus one, zero to n minus one. Yes. Okay, now now let's uh, look into this example. So uh, you create threads in OpenMP with a parallel constraint. Again, you are doing the same th thing, pragma OMP parallel. So this is the thing to create parallel. Now here you see you are setting the uh, number of threads inside the program, not on the bash. So this is a runtime function to request a certain number of threads. So what I can do is like I I, I can request it here. Uh, 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 uh suppose on the bash in the bash is uh, you, you do it like this so let me show you that yeah so this is how you can do it on the bash this one export to mp norm threads 4 so suppose you, uh, you have written 8 here but again inside the code if you write it like this 4 so that will be over it so you will be actually using this runtime function to request a certain number of threads now here Uh, runtime function returning a thread id so we have already discussed omp get thread number so each thread executes a copy of the code within the structured block so this is important each thread is executing a copy of the same code within the structured block okay now uh, we are just dealing with a very simple example to really understand what's going on so now the, now this is what is going on here actually so you can see that this is a serial part this part each thread executes the same code redundantly so now you can see this part is serial why this part is serial because this is this part you can see double this is outside okay so this is the master thread then you create several threads here and the moment you have created several several thread then so it is done executed parallelly and then again you come out of here so th but at this point uh, at this point let me use a different point right? okay Uh, uh, this is another important point at this point threads wait here for all threads to finish before proceeding so this is a very tricky point actually because of some reason if uh, one thread actually does not come here then there is a danger actually so it is like a never ending wait because everybody is waiting actually threads wait here for all threads to finish before proceeding 
so otherwise it, there can be a deadlock if some one thread does not come back here so you have to be very careful this is a very very critical point here because there is a, 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 a implicit barrier here okay another important point this this variable you can see that nothing is mentioned here private uh, shared nothing is mentioned so the, the, this is a shared variable because this is a global variable a single copy of a is shared between all threads so all threads are actually uh, can access this variable because this is a global shared variable this part is clear to all of you all of you got this right so this is this is a typical example of a shared variable all all can all threads can access this you can see that all threads are accessing here okay now uh, before we finish we'll look into it uh, uh, quickly oh you, you have a lecture uh, from 12 o'clock yes sir okay so i think yes, we'll sir. end it we'll end it here today and from next lecture we'll take this problem so we'll convert this code uh, into a parallel code okay if you have any questions you can ask me now